win at least one million dollars in America by the lottery. One, uh, that's uh, 15, 1,500 people every year. One million dollars at least. They say that on average. Imagine someone just gave you a million dollars. I don't know. You were on a game show and you picked A and it was the right answer, or you did something and you won a million dollars. Now, for uh, many of these people, they they got uh, lucky. Some some people have even won. I think I've heard some people win the lottery twice. Now, for a Christian, we shouldn't really gamble uh, because the way uh, the Bible warns us of, of getting many uh, riches quickly because we don't really take care of it. All these people, like majority of these people who get all these millions of dollars instantly, in like a next few years, they're broke. They're, they don't have any more money for themselves. So really, um, we, we shouldn't put our eyes so much on just making money. What is What is this life about? And you know, in times, we're, we're in a time where it's so prosperous, where we even throw million dollars out every year. In the United States alone, we're so blessed. We have so many great things. Uh, we have clean water. We have roads. We have highways. Almost everyone here has a car. In other countries, like, man, you're practically a king if you have a car. And there's not uh, many other things that, um, that other people have. You know, a lot of people still live in, like, old times where they don't have that much electricity. Some of them are barely starting to get electricity. And, you know, it, it's a big difference how much technology and everything has grown. If, you, if we just take it back about 150 years ago, there was no highways, there was no so much technology back then. I think uh, people were still traveling on a, uh, as fast as two horses can take them. Now we can get on a plane and in only a few hours we can get from here to like Dallas, to here to New York, to here in so many great distances. And the Bible tells us that the, the knowledge of man will increase when uh, Jesus' time is coming closer. Now more than ever, just in this short period of time, we, we've managed to win in so many great things. In, in my uh, grandfather, uh, grandfather's generation, he would tell me, man, back then, all we did, we didn't have no electricity. We had a mule that was pulling, uh, pulling everything. And he, was, he would witness all these great differences. And now, uh, what a difference. Right? And this is a warning of the end, where so many people are so abundantly living, and so many people are, are suffering in poverty. Uh, technology increases. Now, many things, many things weren't here as they were before. You know what? I, I wanted to talk to you today about the end of time. Time is running out now. The Bible says that right now, uh, Jesus' time is coming more than ever. And I believe that by uh, seeing the signs that the Bible tells us, uh, the prophecies that God has given to us. You know what, but I want to uh, point out a key important uh, subject. And so Jesus said, not that many people will be saved. What happened here? Not that many people will find uh, the truth and be saved. Why is that? Because narrow is the path and few that find it. It's, uh, just like uh, Jesus gave us this one uh, sign. He says, At the time of Noah, it shall be when I return. With Noah, uh, God told Noah to build this gigantic boat. And he said that, I'm going gonna, uh, I'm gonna to clean the earth. I'm going to wipe it of everything. And Noah, he believed God, and he started to build this gigantic boat, which I don't know how long. It could have been like four football fields long. This is like one. So it's like four football fields long. It's a big boat. And why so many people heard the message but didn't go into the boat? The Bible says out of this gigantic boat, only eight, eight people went in there. Now, there was plenty of room in the, in the ark. There was plenty of room for people to go in. But why? Why, why? why was there only eight? Because, you know what, the Bible says that in the people's heart, in the world's heart, they were constantly thinking evil, constantly just uh, grieving away God. You know what, the same excuses that they had back then is the same excuses that we have today, that we don't give our lives to God, that, well, that we, we choose not to go into the ark. You know what, people today are looking for, they're not even looking for truth, they don't even look for God, they don't even look for salvation. What we want more or less now is we want to have religion, but we don't want to have God. We want to be able to do what we want. We want to be able to have our, 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 uh, our sins and still be saved. You know what? A true religion is not like that. Uh, and we expect to go into heaven with all so much sin. You know, only the Bible says that Jesus is the only one, only one that can forgive us of our sins. 
man. There is no tr true religion like that. You know why nobody wants to find God? Because it's a sacrifice sometimes. It's a sacrifice to be Christian. It's a sacrifice to be saved. Uh, it's a choice because we need to sacrifice some things in our lives. You think, man, I, I would be a Christian, but you know what? I just can't give up drinking. You know what? I just can't give up pornography. You know what? I, I just can't give up premarital sex. There's so many, uh, so many things that hold us back. You know what? I would want to be a Christian, but you know, my dad doesn't let me. My mom doesn't let me. Or I, I don't let others. Because it costs. It costs to be a Christian. You have to be willing. Because the Bible says that we should live to please God and not others. Typically, we just want to give, uh, give just the bare minimum to God. And just, just want to leave God like that. But back in Noah's day... He would preach. He would try to convince people that there was a flood. Back in those days, they'd never even seen rain. The Bible says that there was like a mist that would come and water, water the fields. But they've never seen a drop of rain. If I tell you, you know what, be careful because the Bible says a, a flood is coming. You would probably believe me. Maybe because we've already seen floods. We've already seen, uh, uh, seen what rain is. But back then, it must have been hard to convince them of something that they never seen. Because they've never seen rain in their whole life. It's like... It's like you lived in uh, Arizona, and someone was building a boat. That's out. What's that for? Oh, it's for, for when it rains. It's going to flood here. Would you believe them? And you know, Arizona is nothing but, but desert. Arizona is just, uh, you, you would think the person's crazy. So it must have been hard to try and convince. The Bible says that Noah preached for 120 years uh, to the people. Man, I, I preach once every week. Sometimes I uh, uh, preach to my church. I preach here. For 120 years of him giving the message of salvation, giving the warning. But you know what? At the end of the 120 years, it finally came down to those, this last day. This last day for Noah. He said, man, it's going to happen. It's going to happen today. So I wish, I wish I was back there to hear what, John, what Noah would tell to these people. One last message right before he goes to the ark. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's right there in front of the ark pleading with the people. The people came to hear Noah, and they probably had these convictions. They're like, man, please get into this boat because there's no more. There's no other way. There's no more salvation. He would tell it to his family. He would tell it to his friends. He would tell even with the people that probably helped him make this boat. Uh, to his co-workers and you could just imagine how they felt they had the same feelings as we have today when God tries to talk to us and you know what in our hearts we feel so torn apart and our faces I, I, I preached before to other people and you could just see in some people's faces they want to give their heart to God but you know what inside, inside them they're battling and as Noah pleads he cries he sees that uh, people are trying trying to just maybe trying to give trying to win this battle. I can picture maybe a, a, a wife coming closer to the boat, but then a husband pulling her back. I can picture a young child trying to go into the Ark of Salvation, and I can picture parents pulling them back. Maybe an old man who finally got up to the door and, and was thinking of so many things of what Noah said, and, and he had to make a decision. And in his heart, I'm pretty sure he was battling. And then at the end of it, he, he decides he's not going to do it. You know what, for Noah, that must have been the hardest thing, to know that everyone's going to perish except for you, and uh, 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 except for the ones who are in this boat. You know what, I bet she was trying to get everyone into this boat. But sad, sadly, with tears in his eyes, he probably, had to, he probably said, that's it, there's no more time. And uh, you see, as they lift the gate, slowly a hand just comes and seals up this ark. And these people, after hearing this message and probably see the door closed, they, they're probably feeling sad, they're like, Man, what Noah said, do you think it could come true? Do you think there could be a flood that can destroy the whole earth? Well, they were probably thinking, man, maybe that day they were thinking about it. Man, I hope it doesn't happen true. But you know what time says? Uh, the Bible says that time went by. It said that uh, one day passed, two days passed, nothing happened. The sky was blue. Uh, six, uh, five, six, up until the seventh day. You know what, that's when they probably thought, you know what, Noah, he must have been embarrassed because there's no rain in sight. I imagine Noah, when he's going to come out, he's going to be so embarrassed that there's not even nothing out here. And then as they start to hear the thunder quake of the earth and, and start to see the drops of water and see the floods coming through, the oceans no longer being divided by the lands, but the water rising and rising until they finally realize that, you know what, it's too late. You know what, finally, the Bible says that only the ones who accept God can have everlasting, uh, everlasting life. I, I bet you with Noah, there was plenty of room. 
for, for, for others to come in. But for Noah, his heart must have been grieved. You know what? This is the same story for us today. You know, our time is now. Your time to give your life to God is right now here. We, we can't play. Uh, we have to give up things of this world. Some of us, we may have to give up a few friends. Some of us, we may have to give up a few times at work. Some of us, we may have to give, uh, give up a few many things because the Bible says that uh, wide is a pathway to destruction and narrow is a path of salvation. It's not impossible to be saved. It's not anything hard and it doesn't have to cost you one thing. But it, it has to cost you one thing. Believe. You have to believe. And you have to ask God for forgiveness and you have to look for God. Because in your fruit, in, in your actions, that's how you'll show that you're truly saved. And this is, this is a short message. I didn't want to keep you guys long here. Uh, I know it's time to so, so, so we're going to end it right here. Now, I want all of us to just bow our heads and let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for every single one of these people that are here, that are listening to this message, God. Lord, may our hearts be softened by your words and help us, God, to look for you, Heavenly Father. If someone here does not have a church to go to, I pray that you, Heavenly Father, guide them, that you bring them to a church that speaks your truth, Heavenly Father, that speaks of a Christ that is living. Lord, I pray that you put in our hearts to seek you, to find you, and to give up any of the things that hold us back, God, because you, Heavenly Father, do not want any of us to perish but have everlasting life, God. And every single one of these people, Heavenly Father, has decided, you know what, I want to follow you, God. Guide us, Heavenly Father, and forgive us of all our sins. In the name of Jesus, we all pray. Amen. You guys are free to go, guys.